all right welcome back everyone to another video hopefully this one's much clearer much better um let's see um so i've been kind of on a lookout for these things um these are like old thin clients sometimes you can get really really surprising hardware uh but this one's a bit more normal uh this is x86 so let's start from the beginning this is the uh dell wise and if you can see the label here dx0d or 5010 and these are um kind of old let's see what the manufacturing if date if they have provided here as uh may 2015 but even from 2015 standards there these are really really thin client grade hardware uh nothing to write home about it's like a very old amd um dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor say in the atom but from the amd side of things it has a radeon 60 6002 radeon hd 6250 yeah if i'm not correct if not if i'm not wrong inside of it and a couple other things so let's open it up let's see what's in there and we'll install an os and i'll, I'll tell you the story of how i got it so again as i said i've been on sort of a lookout for these things and they usually show up on secondhand market as mini pcs where people have removed the original thin client um the, the screws are really tight on um might need a bigger screwdriver um where people have like installed proper windows builds on it and uh proper windows builds on it and they don't really uh they they remove all the thin clients bits so like the dell dell's thin os or other stuff like it so yeah it was blue tack that's why it's so um difficult to remove the small screwdriver so uh, and it, uh, so one such uh, vendor was on uh, Quaker, which is India's sort of comparable service to Craigslist, although it's not that as crazy. Uh, we are a bit more, uh, Quaker is a bit more, um, you know, well behaved <laughs> in a way. There are no, no, no one posting crazy shit, although I did see a, like a Porsche listed for quite a lot of money which was weird but anyway uh, i digress um so the vendor had it listed for about 40 usd uh, equivalent in rupees and i jumped on it it's not something i'd usually buy off the shelf new but it's just one of those unique hardware where it's like an embedded amd processor that you can't get other uh, any other way on a system and then i just wanted to see what uh, a thin client would look like in this form factor uh, because what i'm really interested in is some old power pc thin clients if i ever get across uh, one of those uh, but look finding them locally here might be difficult but anyways these flood the market and i wanted to see how they do as a small linux box linux server um, at times you really need uh, x86 where you know stuff like the pi doesn't really cut off cut it or um you know for running old windows xp stuff windows 90 uh, probably won't run windows 98 that well but xp definitely uh windows 7 it comes preloaded with um so if you if you need some very specific uh, uh software and you need uh, to run and you need a cheap hardware then like this is sort of your deal it comes with the speaker inbuilt and that speaker works just fine um and of course in ev block fashion we are taking it apart before we turn it on and this is the speaker wire i'll keep it as such uh, so here's the internals um so as you can see that's a sata dom or discon module people call it by different names but that's actually a sata disk you can replace it with something else um that's the cmos clear jumper you have a lonely sata port here and what the vendor provided me was with uh, they did give me um, a, a SATA cable, uh, but they also gave me this. And now this is a floppy disk uh, to um, a SATA power connector, but I can't find any place to put this. I'm not sure if any one of these pins provide 5 volts. Uh, there's a different variant. There's a 50... Uh, 5070 if I remember correctly which actually has a, a floppy power connector right there but I can't even see the pads for it so I'm not sure if 
um this is supposed to go somewhere here or this is supposed to go here we'll we'll take a look at a later date but this is a full-blown sata card so you can have a sata extension cable and still have a full-blown ssd or like what a lot of folks do uh, and I, I might do this mod later on is uh they usually just tear down an ssd which is usually a similar size uh module inside and you can just put the bare module and not have the entire uh thing there um Apart from that, let's see if this screw comes out with the screwdriver or no. Yeah, that goes. So this wasn't blue tacked as hard. Um, so let's see if we can take this out. Yep, and that's your SATA DOM. DOM. That's a 16 gig module. Um, I'm guessing two 8 gig chips or one's a controller chip. Now they, they both look like memory chips. Maybe that tiny little thing is the controller chip. Oh no, we have a controller chip at the back. So yeah that's that um what else so i'm not going to take out the entire board from the box today uh at least I, I don't see a need to do it today uh in this video if i if i ever need to do another mod i might we have our heat sinks we have the cpus beneath them uh, i will try and take them out because you know you just see the bare silicon uh clean it up a bit maybe add some new thermal paste although the very low power part probably doesn't require new thermal paste the pads seem fine um below this board there's nothing much this is just the audio and power board so uh, you have usb you have audio uh you have your power switch and power led and then speaker and beneath this board is the rtc so if, if sometime uh, if the rtc battery dies that's that's where it is uh and then you have your single slot memory i hope it's single slot maybe it's dual slot uh, i think on this one it's just one slot um so you can I technically should be able to go up to eight gigs this one comes with a four gig module uh but i'm not sure if you can go up to eight gig on this motherboard um yeah let's let's then take out the heatsink and see how it all looks in, inside i think it should come out now so yeah that's your uh heatsink very light uh just a single heat pipe running probably through these bits okay um i'm not actually sure which one's the cpu which one's the gpu now uh because they both look uh very similar um and the gpu could be the larger die uh there's no marking either uh let's let's get some isopropyl in the works and clean this up maybe you can see from the marking what's what Although considering that the RAM is here, I'd say, and the and the display port is here, and display port and DVI, I'd say that's the GPU and that's the CPU. That's a safer bet, um, just from the positioning of the stuff. Also, uh, do I see anything else that makes makes sure that that's the CPU? Probably not. Just the memory location and the display port location. It would be weird if it was switched from a PCB design point of view. All right, so both the chips say AMD. Um, I'll probably take a close-up look, um, close-up image, and send it and show it on the screen. Yep, that's the CPU from the uh, marking. Um, I don't see any marking that says radio in here, but here on the other larger chip, I can see it spell out the um, the CPU ID or the model. Alright, so I'll just clean the heatsink up and apply fresh thermal paste, although this thermal paste did look somewhat fresh, it wasn't dry, uh, but now that we've removed it, uh, better just apply a new one. So now that there's not much else to show, uh, I'll close it up and we'll boot Linux on it and see how that goes. 
and probably I'll then uh, install an updated image and actually go ahead and install Linux should be fun okay so hook up the USB here so this has Ventoy on it and my boot images and hook up the LAN just so I can get tools downloaded if I need post install we have the uh, receiver for keyboard and mouse and then my HDMI capture card so I'll just do a direct capture onto OBS for the time being the power supply situation is a uh, 19 volt 3 amp 3.4 amp brick i'm guessing that's the uh, i don't think that's original by any means um but yeah it's a 19 volt laptop brick so anyone would probably work plug that keep it somewhere there and plug it in Right, so I'll switch to the HDMI capture and we'll see what's going on. All right, that's the blank no signal screen and then I just start to boot. I'm also smashing delete. And as soon as something comes up, that should go into the bias. There it is. So as you can see, AMD GT48E processor, 1.4 gigahertz, dual core. Um, and we'll take a look at other system information later. Uh, didn't show the cache and everything, but that's fine, I guess. Um, yeah, the memory for the GPU is entirely shared. There's there's no memory chips around the GPU. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. You'd uh, probably lose quite a bit of your uh, main memory um, if you're planning on using this. And yeah, nothing much. That's that's all the boot drives. You could it shows my boot drive here as well. And we can just boot. Um, actually, what I'll do is uh move this up so that actually I'll, I'll just remove the usb stick for now and boot into what the seller gave me which was a very bare bones install of windows without any drivers or anything so just windows 7 um nothing fancy straight up windows 7 uh, and that's it so i'm just waiting for it to uh, yeah, I didn't shut down properly last time I tested this. So, it, that's it. So it boots quick because it's technically on an SSD, even it's like an MLC, even if it's like an MLC NAND flash, but obviously the, they didn't activate the windows at all. But you might be able to hear the speaker slightly. It's not a super loud speaker, but it's a speaker. There you go. And yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. 1.4 GB free of 14 gigs. God knows what's in there. Uh, I mean, not uh, base Windows install should not take that much. I don't see any other data. Like I don't, I don't see stuff on here that shouldn't be. There's no 
it's it's a fresh install by every every mean but it's also taking quite a lot of storage on that 16 gig dom um yeah not good we'll install linux on it um and if required maybe i'll do like an ssd upgrade video later down the line Actually, Linux is not the only thing I want to install on it. We'll get to the other stuff later in another video. But this one's Linux. Probably a good time to set the drive. And should take the USB drive as the first boot drive automatically this time. Uh, and the bootloader seems to be EFI only. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, it's 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 not a complicated bootloader, but it's an EFI only bootloader. I haven't been able to like boot legacy OS on it. Uh, it usually throws an error. All right, so let's go for Manjaro and XSpace. This is not the latest disk image. The latest one is twenty one dot two dot five. But this should be good enough, and then we can run up updates on it. Yep, it is slow. The USB is slow. Um, it's just USB 2, there's no USB 3 hardware. Ah, I forgot to mention talking about hardware on it um there is a mpcie slot where you can add wi-fi to it and or use it for any other mpci users uh, which might be having an external gpu which we can try at one point um but for the most part it's for wi-fi um so you can add your cards on there It's not extremely hot right now, but I've seen it reach 70 plus on the CP on, on the CPU temp, so it can get hot. Um, I don't know if a fan is required though. It's not burning hot. Whoa. <laughs> that's something you don't want to see, but I'm sure that's just a weird driver glitch. Yep, it's still loading. You can see how choppy the mouse is. Um, that's because it's busy reading from the USB. Um, and I'll probably wait for Firefox to show up because it usually pops up as soon as I want to start installing something. Okay, Firefox didn't show up. Maybe it's still doing stuff in the background um so yeah let's install it and then we'll like play with um because there's no play with uh there's no um no sense in actually playing with the live media given the amount restricted amount of memory and the slow um usb Alright, I'll skim through that and see you on the other side.
Hello, it's me from a couple days later. Um, as you can see, I've been sort of toiling around with that uh, wise box there. And there's been some issues with Linux install that are very biasy specific things that I don't understand why those happens. But um, this, is the, this is a similar situation that I faced with the Jaguar board. It has something to do with early EFI implementations where it was not really, um, understood or like played around with enough. Um, they used to have two BIOS. They used to have a Windows friendly BIOS and a Linux friendly BIOS. Linux would still boot in most cases, but when you're going to install Grub, it will fail. And this is it's, it's what the similar situation is happening with this, where if you go ahead and install Grub, it fails. So Manjaro, Debian, Fedora, anything that uses Grub by default, the installation just fails and you don't have a choice to change it. Um, you usually just went ahead and flashed another BIOS that didn't make that Grub install fail and it doesn't happen like i couldn't find an up-to-date instruction to do it uh dell's own own uh wise imaging tool uh just fails to recognize any usb device uh it would i mean it would show up but it would be like yeah i can't use it for for any number of devices i have a windows system booted up right there that i tried it on there that's a proper windows 7 system no imitation i have a windows 10 windows 11 system right there didn't work at all um so not sure if that tool's bad now or devs just killed the service off to like pull in images and now the tool tools just you know crippled <sighs> yeah. i don't know what to do um what did work was not using grub so if you manually install stuff or if your installer does give the option to switch over to system dboot or syslinux or anything else you're good you're good um so for alpine linux what worked was syslinux or ext linux and for um arc linux or arch linux uh what worked was um system depot so both of those so yes arch linux install and i'll, I'll show you in a bit the entire process um alpine linux i'm not sure the clip again it's, it's the same thing it's an install nothing different they're on it um on the I'll, I'll show the arch linux install and i use the arch linux install script and that worked really well it just defaults to system deboot and that just put it up fine so i guess like there's some weird yeah grubs aging uh, maybe they didn't um fix the issue or um, or like have a workaround because it's not really a grub issue it's, it's but like grub needs to have a workaround for system like these uh, so if you're in the market, uh, just just uh, you know keep in mind that um, that thing will not boot Grub. It will boot Grub. That's the fun part. Like if it's pre-installed, it will boot Grub. If I if I take a Fedora image that already that's already installed, it will boot it. There's no problem booting it. It's only the installed part, and I think it's where it's trying to set up the. Um, the OS has the primary OS, so like add EFI entry. Uh, that's where it fails, or it thinks it fails because I did see in a uh, Fedora entry in the boot section. Um, that's why it think it fails and then crashes the entire boot process. Uh, in Fedora, it kept failing, um, but you could continue, uh, but it never made a grub entry for Fedora. I'm not sure what's going on there. So again, similar situation across the board, even on Debian um so i didn't even try one to probably the same thing so yeah that's the thing uh i don't know none even grub wouldn't give like a full error um none of these OSs would give a full error explaining what actually went wrong um so yeah uh i'll continue with the video and see what all works and uh, run some demos of this thing